Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to dive deeper into the built-in project that I completed last month in our living room. If you haven't seen those videos, I've already completed two of them. You can check them out by clicking these cards up here. And those are different aspects um, of the project as well. So let's jump right into how I constructed them. I started this entire project in Fusion 360. Now I'm completely new to Fusion, uh, but this is where I started my thought process and got everything laid out. I'm going to be using three quarter inch plywood, breaking it all down with my track saw um, into the proper sizes. And then I'm going to be using brad nails and glue to construct them. All right, we've got all the plywood broken down that I'm going to need to build the lowers. Now these are basically just cabinet carcasses. Um, one thing that's, that really helped it to go quickly is um, generating that cut list on Fusion 360, really just kind of making the errors digitally before I cut and before I assembled. So in my mind, I've already kind of went through this process and how it's gonna to go together. And now it's time to assemble those lower cabinets. The assembly process went really quickly with this construction method. Glue and brad nails is not the way that everybody would build it, but it's a sufficient way for this. Uh, these things were rock solid once I put all the pieces together. Uh, another reason I went with brad nails and glue on this is just for accessibility. I wanted to show how you can build something for yourself with really a, a nail gun and glue. I would say the one downside to using brads is having to mark where you're gonna shoot them through uh, because I missed sometimes and I had to pull them out and, and redo it. This process was basically just following my Fusion 360 model and assembling the pieces that I had already cut to size. The painting process did take a while. I used my home right sprayer to prime and paint all these carcasses. I won't bother you with that, um, but we basically just painted them the same color as the walls. So I want to point this out real quick. Uh, these pieces these little supports are really key when you're building this way. Obviously just structural support, and they'll also give me a way to drill into the studs and the wall. It's important to get these in before this glue dries. Otherwise, you're breaking loose. If they dry in the wrong angle or cockeyed at all, um, you have to break them loose to get them square. So they, these, one on the top, one on the bottom, um, keeps everything square and uh, while the glue dries and then it sets up that way and everything is nice and solid. All right, so here's one of the lower car carcasses. And once I got it in place, I realized that I need some center support. Um, so this, this bottom run doesn't sag. So I'm just gonna use these simple uh, cutoffs, three and a half inches by 16 inches, flip the carcass over and tone all that in place and that will give me some middle support. All right, once these pieces are in place, uh, the next thing will be is to get these lowers in their final location. That way we can start building everything and assembling everything off from these. If you didn't know, uh, your house walls are probably not perfectly straight or perfectly level or perfectly, perfectly perpendicular. And that's the problem I have with this fireplace and this wall does not create a 90 degree like this built-in does. So, not a big issue. We're actually gonna trim out that side and you won't be able to see it. The other issue is the built-in, the floor and the wall don't create a 90 degree angle. And so I have a little bit of play in there. So what I'm gonna do is I've got some levels here that I'm gonna set them to level and I'm gonna use some of the walnut cutoffs from the countertops that you saw earlier uh, as shims. So I'm going to shim the underside and I'm going to shim a gap back here before I, and when I screw them to the wall, that way, um, this whole thing sits level. We had to think through our cord management. Basically we're going to drill one hole in the top and the receiver and internet and all that stuff is going to sit right here and all the cords are going to run down here. So what I'll do is when I get the countertop on here, um, I'll have this hole. It would have been easier to drill them both at the same time, but I've got to get this in place, cords in place, before I can get the walnut top on place. This was kind of a pain point in the project of trying to figure out where to drill holes, where those cords need to go, what was going to sit where. 
And I think some forethought would have made this part of the process go smoother. The hole that I drilled was too small. The hard part with hole saws is you need something for your pilot hole to sink into in order to fall in order for it to line up. Trick is to put this, a small piece, a thin piece of lumber in front of the hole. And I'm just gonna tack this in place. Our pilot bit will sink into this and then we can get a nice straight hole um, all the way through. Uh, think of this whole project as you know kind of being built from the ground up we started with the lowers the next layer is the countertops and then the uppers sit on top of the countertops so that's the way things needed to be constructed and installed uh, we couldn't jump ahead at all because one relied on the other since we took the time to level the lowers everything else was going to be a level after that so we put the countertops on and we attached them just using some screws through the underside. Once we had that done, we could move on to installing the uppers. The uppers sit on the walnut, um, like I said, but they aren't really attached to the walnut at all. They're attached to studs in the wall behind them and that's what holds them in place. Um, the two uppers are, are also nailed together in the center. To attach them to the wall, we used cabinet screws through that support piece I told you about earlier into the wall stud. We're gonna add the pinholes for the adjustable shelves. So I've got a tool that makes this super easy. This is Craig's shelf pin jig. It makes it really easy to get the spacing correct. This jig has a, a piece of plastic that goes right here and you would wrap it on that edge so it keeps everything parallel and you, you could just move it up. Well, since it doesn't come to the front, the holes need, our, our holes need to be further back. Um, so we are using a combination of this with this level. So we'll put it on and then we'll put the level on and make sure that we're level. We'll show you how we're doing it. From start to finish, this project took over a month and it was a big project. So I'm really trying to slow down a little bit and really extract everything that I did and, and share it with you. So I hope you found parts or all of it's beneficial. Again, if you haven't seen the other project videos that has to do with this particular project, I will link them right here at the end for you to check out. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, be sure to do that before you go. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.